You're about to listen to Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games. It's a comedy video game podcast. We would like to stress that the hosts are not experts and are really just very crass commentators. Seriously, this is an explicit podcast that happens to talk about video games sometimes. So please enjoy this pretty okay podcast with Tyler and Dave. Hello, Internet, and welcome again, again, to another Tadpog podcast. It's a show that happens weekly, where we get messages. It's cool. Yeah, I was checking to see if that was my phone that just went off. That probably even didn't get picked up by the mic, yeah. so I'm willing to bet. <laughs> it's always fun to acknowledge what no You're one right. hears. We assure you that somebody got a notification on a phone. Yeah, it could be mine. I didn't even check. I didn't even check to see what status my phone is on before we started. <laughs> but two old guys play old games. And before we get started with anything, with anything, I have my wonderful stepdaughter here, Choco Chica, to try this chocolate that was sent in by Terrified Michelle. Choco Chica, back in, back in the house. Hello. <laughs> All right, so what we have here, the first one, gingerbread cookie, stone ground. What do you think about this one? I think it will be good. Yeah? Because I like gingerbread okay. cookies. Gingerbread's good. All right, let's see. There's a piece for you. But I can get nervous over chocolate I haven't tried. Or you want to try hand a piece of that to Dave? Oh, I get to try some too? Cool, thank you. All right. So dark chocolate, gingerbread. Ready? What do you think? It tastes like just regular dark chocolate. I like it. Mm-hmm. It's like crunchy. It's got a little bit of that mm-hmm. ginger heat to mm-hmm. it. Just a little bit. But you like that? Mm-hmm. Your yeah. mom is skeptical. Good job, Michelle. It's number one. It's right. very distinguishing chocolate chip. One for one. Number two, cranberry pumpkin spice. Wait, I want to see, if, before we try this one, mm-hmm. I want to know, just so we know like your level of chocolate expertise, Choco Chica, what is your favorite chocolate? What's your favorite chocolate? Um, cookies and cream. Cookies and cream? Like a Hershey's cookies and cream bar? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So there we are. That's our that's our bar. These chocolates need to be better mm-hmm. than a Hershey's cookies and cream bar, or they fail. That one's a, that one was a little better than cookies and cream. It was a little better? Yeah. All right. So that, one, that right. one passes. Okay. Yes. So what did you think when I had you try that 100% cacao dark chocolate? It was a little better. You almost threw up when I had you try the really, really dark one. <laughs> oh, that one. <laughs> Then, yeah, I hated that one. <laughs> okay, well, let's try the cranberry pumpkin spice. I don't like cranberries. I don't, I, I don't think I've ever tried cranberry. So. If you want to try that one over today. You know, it's a delicacy. <laughs> cranberries. <laughs> all right. It just smells like the other one, kind of. A little bit. Oh, we're all smelling it. I like mm-hmm. it. So this is cranberry <laughs> dark chocolate? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Zombie! Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cranberry pumpkin spice. Oh, it's cram- oh gotcha. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I wish everyone could see your face. What do you think, Choco Chico? Disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> what don't you like about it? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's too strong of something. Well, Brainy Junior gave me today this Flathead Lake Gourmet Soda Sour Cherry. Oh, I hope I was hoping you were about to give us all beer. <laughs> I was like, wow. We I gonna, give her. She has enough beer. <laughs> we, <laughs> we're gonna have a real moment. In Tadpog Blanket <laughs> Oasis. <laughs> Going to jail. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I'd even it out. Even out the, the taste. Now, what is this again? Brady Jr. gave it to me. I'm not sure where she got it. Flathead. She got it from Flathead Lake, apparently. I like mm. sour thing, so yeah, I like that. That was good. Yeah. That is tasty. I like that. The last thing I picked up was whenever um, I was at FYE and I saw this. I was like, well, we'll round out with three. Have you ever seen Rugrats, Choco Chica? Bum, bum. No. But so, that looks like a toy that I've seen before. It is. This is. This was on the show, on Rugrats, the Reptar bar that you would eat and it would turn your tongue green. Reptar oh, no. bar. So is this going to turn our tongue green? Does it say that on the we'll wrapper? We'll see. Turns your tongue green. No, it does not. That's what it says on the wrapper. Oh, we don't have enough light in here to even check. One, if you can hand that to Dave. There you go. All right, thank you. Oh, so these are like little individual squares. Mm-hmm. And then there's one for you and one for me. Oh, yeah, I see the green. I've seen the green inside oh, there. Oh, that looks like mint. Mm-hmm. Like a mint. 
It does. Let's try this Reptar bar from our childhood. Let's do well, it. mine and Dave's. It looks like mint, but it's eucalyptus. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Tastes like a Hershey's bar yep. to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like frosting in it. Mm -hmm. Like a cream. Like mm -hmm. a cream. Cream frosting. Let me see your tongue. It's green. It is green, confirmed. <laughs> Well, thank you, Terrified Michelle. Did you enjoy that? Choco Chica? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Except the... <laughs> um, the cranberry The cranberry one? Yes. So did the Reptar Bar. How'd you, what'd you think of it? I liked it a lot. It was yeah? Good. I liked it a lot, too. It really was like a... Tyler, you nailed it, man. It tasted like a Hershey's bar <laughs> with, like, ice cream frosting on yep. it. I mean, that was like, <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, please. So new favorite? Do you have an, is, are, if, are one of these your new favorite candy bars? Yes. Yeah? Which one? The, the Reptar Bar? The Reptar yeah, Bar? The nice. Most. Here you go. I'll give you both the gingerbread cookie and the Reptar Bar. Thank you. And take those back with you. You're an official I'm, 90s kid now. Yeah, because I'm going to say bad things in this room, so you should probably not ban <laughs> it. <laughs> not about you. Not about you. <laughs> yeah, we promise. We like you. We'd like for you to come back on the show, so we're never going to say bad things about you. Thank you. <laughs> Are you, is she gone? Yeah, she's gone. Can we talk about pussies? <laughs> <laughs> and C words. There couldn't have been like a more like effeminate way for me to say that. <laughs> oh, can we talk about pussies? Pussy. Now? Can we talk oh. about? Oh, the child is gone. Let us talk about pussies. <laughs> all the all that we get. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you say it from all that we get and reminds me of the uh, subreddit. Uh, that you apparently knew about. I was I was hoping that I could like t teach you a new thing on Reddit, but I should know that you are the master and I am I am the young Padawan. Uh, the I had sex subreddit. So, oh so my good. god, it's so good. It's just a subreddit filled with uh, people posting other things that people have posted on social media, bragging about having sex. It is fucking hilarious. And I know some of them are not true, but I choose to believe that they are. Oh, it's better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, in the vein of trying things, I do still have some stuff that, that Choco Chica would not have been interested in, which are some hot sauces. Oh, you've got some hot sauces? I do, because I've got, I've got the one you that your sister bought you that <laughs> looks hilarious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> it looks very funny. It's like, if, what, who would ever thought, like... Hot sauce would come in this squat little bottle. Like, it looks like someone, it looks like Honey, I Shrunk the Two Liter is what it looks like. <laughs> Time six, heaven, most hot, <laughs> mellow habanero Japanese hot sauce. And look at the drawings. Can you tell me what those are? A man in a Speedo with a habanero for a head? Yes. Uh, oh, no, he's on a cloud. There, there are three of them. <laughs> Ingredients, habanero peppers, rice vinegar, mangoes, salt. It's good. My uh, sister and uh, brother-in-law, a future brother-in-law, uh, they got me a Fuego box, a gift box. Man, it's a. I have been wanting to get a subscription to the Fuego box for a long time because I love hot sauces, but it's so fucking expensive. Um, you know, I've been asked before, if you guys wanted to sponsor anybody in the world, who would that be? And I think my answer would be Fuego Box Fuego because Box. I would like their I would like their sauces each yeah. month, but I yeah. do not want to pay the uh, very expensive <laughs> amount that they want me to pay. You for. want one of these with some sauce? Yeah, on if it? you're gonna do it, I've already tried it, but I, I want more. So my insatiable my ins my insatiable spice hole. Mm -hmm. There you go. Craves it. That is a sentence that took entirely too long for me to finish. <laughs> I'm practicing for like senior citizen. <laughs> All, right. All right. Here we go. All right. Let's Time do it. six. Time six. Most hot. It's not most hot. <laughs> Spoilers. Man, that is fucking good. It's really good, that isn't is it? Really good. It's really good. It's hot, but it's also, like, man. It's really good. It's hot. I like the flavor. I had it on tacos today. Today was Taco Tuesday. Mm. Spoilers. We record this show on Tuesdays. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty perfect. Man, it's really good. I like it a lot. They had two other hot sauces that I'm not going to try until that that sauce is done. Mm. That's my rule. I choose a hot sauce, and I use it all up before I switch to another one. It's a, it's a hot sauce system that I've developed. It's a three-point hot sauce system, Tyler, that I like to tell you about. <laughs> I've had some pamphlets. I've taken the liberty of having pamphlets printed out. So here, this other one that we got from Terrified Michelle and Janie. This is the Ghost Scream the, Hot Hot Sauce. Mm, hot Hot. What kind of peppers are you used? Does it say on there? 
Titty peppers. Titty, That's not a thing. Titty I mean, peppers. That also wasn't funny. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Red wine vinegar, fresh onions. Oh, it's oh, it's an onion. Go- it's an onion hot sauce. <laughs> Ghost peppers. Ghost pepper. Okay, cool. It's. Do you think it really is scary hot? Uh, no. I would be most surprised. I like how you said that. Like, uh, I would be most surprised. Like an imperial from Star Wars. It's, it's that hot sauce. It's the most hot heaven times six. It, yeah, I know, right? All right. All right. Go scream. Let's do this shit. Ah! I'm screaming. Mm. That has. I like the flavor of I that, had, man. Yeah, I've I've never tasted a hot sauce that tastes like that. I can really honestly. This is gonna sound like I'm joking because I goofed about the onion, but I can really taste the onion. That's like a smoky onion, like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. You know what? This is going to sound crazy. You know what that would be good in? Spaghetti. Okay. I can see that. I get down on that in spaghetti. All right. The last one. I know you have some of this. This is what you trained on. Oh, that's the Mad Dog. The Mad Dog This, is, this shit's hot, dog. This shit is hot. I'm glad you saved it for last. Yeah, I wanted to be able to taste the others. Well, that's if I can get it open. Well, that didn't work out. It broke that keychain. I did the same thing. I should have warned you. Oops. Well, maybe we won't be trying this one. I'm leaving it all in. You know what's actually going to happen is truncate silence is going to take all the silences out, and you're just going to sound like you got freaked out over the span of like two oh. seconds. <laughs> I guess we're trying this hot sauce. No, we're not <laughs> trying this hot sauce. So you need to give a running commentary of what you're doing. This is taking a ridiculously, hilariously long there time. There we go. Like, that that was the length of um, a Family Guy skit, essentially. (laughs) (laughs) We unintentionally recorded a Family Guy skit in in here tonight. That's how we always do. Do you think Family Guy is still funny? I watch it. Yeah. Like, it it entertains me enough that I will watch it when it comes on. I still like it. It I feel like it gets a lot of hate now. Ooh, that's way too much. Whoa, yes it is. (laughs) Don't eat that. That's like the size of a quarter. Don't do that. (laughs) Because this one doesn't have a little dispenser on it. I mean, I would most. eat it, but I'm just saying you shouldn't, you know. Oh, you've proven that. <laughs> no, I'm fucking with oh, you. Oh, no, we've, we, had two, we have video proof. I'm fucking with you. <laughs> I'm being a real shit lord over here. <laughs> Checking your privilege. Mm-hmm. I love when you pour that. Like, don't you feel like an alchemist or something? I always do. I will always feel like, ooh, I'm pouring some kind of, like, tincture onto this. I'm like a chef. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Mad Dog 357. Yes. Woo. Yeah, it's yeah. hot. It doesn't have much flavor. Like, I don't like the flavor. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of bitter. It is kind of bitter. And it, but it is hot. It does Woo. bring the heat. Yeah. Sacrifices flavor for heat. I'm curious if this is going to give you the hiccups or not. I think I'm good. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, now that we've heated things up, are you ready to talk about something cold? <laughs> Yo. Ice climbers. <laughs> Actually, before we get into that, there's a story that I have to tell before I forget about it. Oh, I'm, uh, your, I'm your weird host, Tyler. That was my stepdaughter and some hot sauces. <laughs> and I'm your bespectacled host, Dave, and I assume that your intro was over, Tyler. Yep. <laughs> okay. I have to tell the story because I already, I already almost forgot about it, and it happened today. So I know I've mentioned on the show before that we are potty training Henry right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure I've mentioned the fact that we had a floor turd at some point. Yes. No, oh, I, I didn't. do not believe so. Oh, okay. Well, we had a floor turd. I mean, that's we've been, he, we've been potty training him by, like, essentially— He's been Donald ducking for a few weeks, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then we introduced pull-ups. So he's in the pull-up stage now where, like, he knows, like, when he feels like he's got to pee, pull the pull-up down and, and sit on the on the potty. So he's got this potty that's shaped like an owl. That doesn't have anything to do with the story. I just mm-hmm. felt like bragging. Good as a ladybug. My son, my son <laughs> has a potty that's shaped like an <laughs> owl. Uh, he, he's better than everybody in the world. Um, he's so, Mine is shaped like a man's mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my oh boy, let's not get into mine. He plays the sound effect from Mikey and uh, look who's talking whenever he's like, Give me your poo, Mikey. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got he's got this potty, and um, it's so fucking big, it's like it's so it, it's like bigger than a regular toilet almost. I guess it's just like I guess they feel like kids need this gigantic toilet to strap into so it's easier or something. <laughs> I don't know, and it's low to the ground. So what that means is. He sits down to pee. Yes, he sits down to pee. Uh-huh. So that's how he does it. And um, it's what, like Bailey J do. It's fine. Yeah, right. That's how we actually. That's how we tur- we taught him. We're like, look at the look at this. 
This is how you pee. I this don't know. This is Bailey JP. It's Bailey JP. Do like she does. Um, and and all things in life. So we've got <laughs> <laughs> we've got um we've got the potty. So he has to sit down to pee. And what happens is when he springs up after peeing, uh, he he sprinkles the floor. Mm, and this mm-hmm. is like this is a no go. We can't be sprinkling the floor. Oh yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you're not supposed to do that. So I, I still do. <laughs> well, we don't have Foxtrot books like <laughs> propped up underneath it to catch all the the, the drippings <laughs> like you did. <laughs> so we've got uh, so he like what, what I have told him is once he he jumped up, I was like, no, nah, man, you gotta shake your wiener. You gotta shake your wiener before you jump off. So what he decided, what his thing is, is he shakes his wiener. By I'm like, glad you're already, before you even started talking, yeah. you started doing it. He essentially does like the Shake Shack on <laughs> while he's sitting down. He just gyrates like a hula hoop um, while I'm barking orders at him. Shake your wiener. <laughs> you, you, the story could end there, but it doesn't. Um, today, I was in the bathroom taking a leak. Henry comes in and like gets like uncomfortably close to the stream. Like, I mean, he is just like, he is like examining it. And I'm kind of like with my free hand, just kind of like pushing him back a little bit. And I finish up and I go, all right, I got to shake my wiener. Teach him a good lesson. Uh Teach him a good Uh, lesson about wiener shaking, you know? (laughs) I got to shake my wiener. And he looks me dead in the eyes and he says, daddy, you have to shake your penis. (laughs) God damn, kid, lighten up, man. It's a fucking... So I told Nikki that because Nikki is very like, anatomically using anatomical correct terms uh, and it's yeah. like to have a little fun it's a wiener it's a wiener it's not a penis <laughs> or a gooder i guess i could say gooder but i feel like that's a very tyler mm. thing i don't want to take that from you <laughs> that's i i have no no gooders of which to name yeah so <laughs> <laughs> so I, you're saying i get, i get gooder privilege uh, yeah yeah go ahead go ahead i license it to you i feel like it's too late though <laughs> i feel like it's already like he taught me today that it's already firmly implanted in his mind that it's penis and not wiener but i tell you what can i take a moment to get nikki back <laughs> Uh-huh. Let me tell a little mini story today. <laughs> this was possibly going to be a thing that I was going to do into a, make it do a long drawn out intro, but I think I can probably do it in a sentence or two. Today, Nikki farted, and I thought it was somebody knocking on the door. <laughs> All right, <laughs> intro story done. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I'm trying to catch Melissa in one, but I don't think she does it. I don't think, I don't think she's it's equipped. We are finally there. We are finally <laughs> there where it's like, we've been together a really long time. And it's like, I almost feel like bragging about it. My wife farts in front of me now. This is the thing. She's just like, this is really opening up. <laughs> Although. Having to use the bathroom with the door open for our son has really opened the door to a lot yeah. of possibilities. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Although she did ask me not to tell that story. Oh. So. Well, but she, doesn't, she might hear this in like two or three years. She doesn't listen. Not a, so it's nope. not even a big deal. But I told her as I was walking out the door, I was like, I'm telling that story. Then I shut the door. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> <laughs> Stop. I'm Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> Who's knocking on doors in there? <laughs> I'm all confused. <laughs> Getting into my car. It's like, it sounds like there's eight people in there knocking on doors. Answer your telephone. What? <laughs> Why? Where? <laughs> oh. Hey, Dave. Hi, Tyler. Uh, I re-listened to our last episode, so, hey, do you want to read from Wikipedia? I'm not gonna, even going to ask you if you hear that, even though it would have been Nikki farting. Yeah. <laughs> Did I tell you? You were very kind <laughs> in your <laughs> fart noise. Like, I'm telling you, it sounded like somebody knocking on the front door. It was, yeah, you're very, you're being, it was not, a, it was like a, it was like a, I'm here and I'm a fart and I'm going to like let everybody know. <laughs> so whenever uh, the Arcade Expo rolls around, everybody's like, hey, Nikki. <laughs> Uh, Everybody's yeah. very confused. She will be. She will be very confused because that's three months away, and she's gonna be like, "I, I don't understand." It'll live that long. <laughs> yeah, you think live. it will? Yeah. yeah, she's totally. Uh, someone's totally gonna fucking blow my spot up on Facebook Nation. Mm. I goddamn guarantee it. <laughs> Uh, and they're going to tag her, and uh, they're going to fucking rat me out. So this is what I'm saying is that person that does that is my mortal enemy. <laughs> All right, there you go. Calling you, it. You know how serious. Babe Ruth pointing out. Pointing out. <laughs> you know how serious, calling it. serious that is for me. You know how I am. You know how I am with those grudges. Mm-hmm. So That's true. Go. You put dwarves to shame. I know. I feel like I've issued a very, very weird <laughs> challenge. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and do it, bitch. <laughs> All right, just kidding. I love you. Uh, even if you do that, in fact, um, 
It depends on who it is. If it's Alex Pena, you're fine. Yeah, oh, Alex, you, you're allowed to do you, that. You could totally do it. All right, Alex. You uh, can fart in my wife's face. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Number one, number one, Tad Bogdan on Facebook. Alex can do whatever the fuck he wants to. Alex, if you want to make that post on Tad Bog Nation, let's reserve it for you. Oh, yeah, so we're not doing Dave Reed's Wikipedia intro anymore. Is that a thing I asked not to do on yeah, last episode? That's never funny. That's never funny. <laughs> oh, but from I, now on, when you said it, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna read it. <laughs> no, I was. I don't. I, it was. I'm saying it was. I wasn't funny because I never come up with a good thing. I do hear that train full of knocking doors. <laughs> Nikki! Nikki! <laughs> Which, of course, ushers in a segment that Dave likes to call, we like to call, Dave likes to call, we read from Wikipedia. <laughs> and I did not have the correct Wikipedia link ready to roll. <laughs> uh, but now I do. Okay, guys. Ice Climber, or as it's known in Japan, Esu Kuraimu, is a vertical... That didn't sound good at all. That, that sounded bad. That's that really. I wasn't. A, I wasn't trying to make fun of the Japanese language there, but it just happened. Um, it's a vertical platform video game developed and published by Nintendo for the family computer in Japan and the Nintendo Entertainment System in North America in 1985. Okay, in Ice Climber, the characters Popo and Nana, 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 Na- Nana. Nana. That's close. Nana, that's Nana. close to what Kenan calls my parents. Nana. Uh, Nanny and Papa. <laughs> they're collecting. Oh yeah, nice. You're, you're, you're fucking mom and dad are the ice climbers. What the fuck? My, my dad has a vertical eight times his own height, <laughs> but can't jump a foot in front of himself. <laughs> yeah, for real, man. Let's. Oh yeah, don't get me started on the jumping mechanics. So these characters are collectively known as the ice climbers, and they venture up thirty-two ice-covered mountains to recover what? Eggplant. Stolen vegetables. <laughs> yeah. uh, a giant condor stole their vegetables, and uh, they're going to get them. There we go. That's it. That, uh, that's the game. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Uh-huh. I'm going to get this out of the way, Dave, because I feel like l- last week you were talking about, like, yeah, I feel like the harshest you've been on this list is just like, eh, Galaga wasn't really for me, blah, blah, blah. We both enjoyed it. Dave, I fucking hated this game. Yeah. Have Dave, you... I fucking hated this yeah, game. Yeah, really? I think like the fact I'm gonna throw I'm throwing it all out. I'm just all right. barfing out my fern gully ish cloud of negativity just to do its villain slo- Un- song slopping all over everything. Unfurl in the... your slopping penis. I sat down, I played this for about 45 minutes, and fuck, I thought it was so bad. That's a long time. I don't know why that it is a classic. And a lot of people, well, I feel like whenever I was doing some research, what other people thought about it, it was pretty mixed. But some people like love this game, and I don't understand it. It's a weird one. Uh, I don't think it is a good game. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get that out mm-hmm. of the way as well. I do not think this is a good game, and I'll tell you why. Uh, the main mechanic in the game is jumping, and that does not work well. Oh yeah, so bad. <laughs> like so bad. The way it works is um, every mountain that you. Do you play... ever which World okay. Six of Mario was a whole game? <laughs> Ice climbers. Uh, there is the way it works is when you jump, you uh, jump. You have the power to jump from one level mm. to the next in a single bound, and your job is to do that until you get to the very top. The problem is they start throwing in obstacles where it's like you have to bust blocks Mario style, yep. which I guess they're ice blocks in this game. You have to bust those ice blocks sometimes to be able to make a hole that you can jump through to the next level. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they throw monsters at you as well. Uh, monsters can kill you, uh, but they also can patch up holes that you've made mm-hmm. to to um, climb up. So they are constantly trying to not only kill you, but try to destroy any progress Pre- that you preserve made. their homes yeah you're, yeah, ex- you're invading their habitat you are totally being a complete asshole mm-hmm. by by what you're doing you're yeah. right um so it because jumping is really the main mechanic in the game mm-hmm. you would think that it would need to be really good if this controlled like mario i would say this would be a fun game i agree if this controlled like mario would just had like the jump physics mm-hmm. altered so that he jumps higher because i mean they really when when Popo and Nana jump, you fucking know they're jumping. They yeah. jump like the tick. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's like, or the or the Hulk, honestly, mm-hmm. because it's like, it's not a Mario jump. It's like a all vertical jump. Oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. like very, very, very little they horizontal. They have a Peter Parker standing vertical that's unreal. <laughs> right. 
but of course their horizontal distance is what is is what kills me. Yeah, because a lot of times you need to traverse some longer distance. Or what I've found is, this is what's super annoying for me when I jump. I can literally clip a ledge that I'm jumping onto. Like, my the pixels overlap. The mm-hmm. pixels collide. But I won't land on that oh, ledge. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. that is infuriating. You'll hit your head on it. it yes. Coming from above. Yes. But trying to, yeah, It is absolutely. infuriating. And I just think that, like, that is... That breaks it for me, man. Yep. Like, if it looks like, if I have to teach my brain, which I had to do, because I played this game for about three hours, and about on hour two, I feel like my brain, it finally clicked. I taught my brain, even though it looks like you're going to land on that ledge, you're not. So you have to compensate for that and jump <laughs> farther over. Uh, and then once I learned that, once I fucking tricked myself into that Jedi fucking mind trick, I had to, then I was like, you okay. throw your holy water at the invisible block. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, there. exactly. Exactly. So, um, man, but it yeah, was There's not no altering fun. your trajectory once you're in the air. No, you're just, you're committed. So it's, yeah, man, it's, that is, that's, that fucking sucks so badly. And it's like, things get fast and so precise and the jumping is so shitty. It's yeah. so shitty. The jumping's really bad. Here's the good news, I think, um, and that is I feel like it's pretty easy uh, because I got through all 32 mountains oh. in that three hours okay. I played, and I didn't like – it was kind of one of those moments where it's like, okay, I'm done. I got through 10 just because I got frustrated with like hit a single block. All right, now let's wait for all these fast-moving clouds to line back up. So oh, right. Knock, okay, knock another one. Okay. All right, well, I'll wait for these blocks to line back up. Okay, jump through. Oh, okay, I just barely missed that. Oh, here comes a monster who's going to repair right, the hole. Put it back. All right, let me, and then that was just like every level, you gotta wait. every tier. Yep. And I was like, you know what? Fuck this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's not a fun game. Mm-hmm. No, it's not a fun game at all. And it's... it's. Why are these guys Smash Brothers characters? Why? <laughs> I, don't, I do not know the answer to now that. Now I really, really don't understand. <laughs> Give me the guy from Kung Fu, not the Ice Climbers. <laughs> I don't know enough about Smash Brothers to know if anybody ever played the Ice Climbers seriously. I tried. I've heard that like they're one of those like super difficult to master, but once you do, that they're really good. Yeah. But like I've I don't know anybody that mains Ice Climbers. I know. I think Jacob was the one who sort of wanted to, who yeah. tests the waters the most. Yeah. But even he was like, "All right, fuck this." I would have liked Yoshi. to as well. Yeah. But um, Kirby like Olimar. I can hear Olimar is the same way. Who? Olimar from uh, Pikmin. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, man, I would I would have gone with him, but Kirby's also got a mallet, and he's better. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the game theory about Kirby was really, really interesting. Trying to explain what he is, and it came down to that he's a giant amoeba. Oh, yeah? And Why he, is that? he justified every power really? that Kirby has with abilities that amoeba possess. He's certainly an invertebrate, so, so I mean, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So he's like, just... He used the justification for that was um, in Smash Brothers, whenever you get electrocuted, it shows your x-ray for a split second. Yes. Everybody has skeletons, except for Kirby, Jigglypuff, Jigglypuff and I'm then sure. Samus, you just see the outline of and her And Mario. Action. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of bones, Mario just was composed of 58 rigid penises. <laughs> Mario's a plant like Superman. Did you not know that? <laughs> so yeah, he's a giant. An amoeba can also engulf things and break down part of their DNA and absorb their positive traits and yeah. get rid of the negative ones like Kirby can wow. do. And Kirby is an shit. amoeba. He's an amoeba. Uh, you should have saved that for two episodes in the future <laughs> where we'll be talking about Kirby's adventure. We'll do it again. <laughs> Everyone will forget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let's Jedi mind trick. All right, they forgot. <laughs> yeah. It's done. None of you remember. This podcast just took a weird, like, 30-second skip. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, you might think you've been abducted by aliens. You haven't. We just wiped your memory for a second. Because uh, really, you go up... Because I thought it was fine. You go through the, all the regular tiers to get to the bonus stage. Right. In the bonus stage, you collect the stolen vegetables. Right. And then try to get to the very top and catch the condor. Right, which I didn't really or know. Or it looks like a pterodactyl to me. It <laughs> looks like a pterodactyl. They call it a condor, but it looks like a pterodactyl, like a big pink pterodactyl. Mm-hmm. A lot of pink in this game, by the way. Like a lot of hot yeah. pink. Nana hot is, pink and blue. Yes. Nana is dressed in hot pink. Uh, Popo is in blue because Popo, police, come on. Yep. Of course he's in blue. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, he's a cop. Uh, uh, wait, all right. I feel like this is good. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Are you ready? Let me throw this at you. We're going to do, we're going to pitch, we're going to pitch an Ice Climber show to Netflix. All right. And here's what I think it is. We can tie in Smash Brothers to it as well. This is going to be great. So what it is is a, a cop who arrested his twin sister 
he was a hooker. Mm, arrested yeah. her for and, showing off her nana. For showing off her nana. <laughs> that's right. Yes, he's the popo. And she's the nana. Uh, and that, of course, is what it's called, popo and nana. I mean, the name of the show, right? Yeah, because I love it when Melissa's like, oh. Get my get the fuck this nana. I'll slam my so nana. Like, oh yeah, god. This weird cunt with nana, this weird nana. <laughs> my, it's not weird. I want to reiterate again <laughs> before she's like, watch call weird again. Man, my God, I don't know I don't know about y'all, but my nana is just sopping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pop this in the freezer real quick. <laughs> what do you buddy like a cold nana later? <laughs> No, but I'll take a regular nan nan later. Yes, so, thank you, Mitch yes. <laughs> so yes, I think that I think the that Popo cuffs Nana in this series, and that's why they're connected mm-hmm. together, a la Smash Brothers. And there we go. Uh, okay. Popo and I Nana. I see where they're also the kind of police he is. He's the vegan police oh, from, from Scott, Scott Pilgrim, Pilgrim versus the world. And he's gotta get the vegetables back. I like that. Yeah. He doesn't actually kill any of these animals. He just hits them with the mallet. They spin around and go away. <laughs> right. Yeah, I forgot to really talk about the mallet. <laughs> that you can hit monsters with the mallet. Mm-hmm. And you do break the the blocks with the mallet when you jump in the air. Mm-hmm. It takes a very long time for the hammer to come up, though. Because it's like you can also kill enemies by jumping up at them, which mm-hmm. feels weird. Because, you know, it's like you're used to, like, jumping on, on enemies them. to kill yeah. them. But if you do that in this game, you will die. Yeah, if you turn into a white ghost I know, yeah, down. they, they freak. <laughs> You, you look you look like Randy from the episode of South Park where he jerks off inside of it. <laughs> or what's the, uh, the, the electrified boy who's just the skeleton covered in lightning who's white and earthbound? Oh God, I don't know. And I've been I've been watching remember. a playthrough of Earthbound recently too. I should know that. I can't remember either. But yeah, you turn into a frozen boy or girl, mm-hmm. starfish style. Uh, kind of looks like Maggie Simpson when she's in her uh, winter uh, <laughs> coat, and you spiral off the stage. It's oh, I just want to reiterate how much I did did not enjoy this game. Yeah, tell me. Just thinking about it. Yeah, just, and like the music and the sound effects. Bad. I didn't well, like. No, well, okay, so here's what's weird. The music is, like, can you hum me? I mean, it's super early NES, so I get right. it. Right. You get to kind of give it a, a little bit of it's a pass. It's like, it was, uh, it came out with it, right? It was, uh... uh it was a pack-in for, uh, in Europe, I believe it okay. was. And I know it came out super, super it was early. A, re- a release game? I believe that it was, yes. Like but it, I'm, Kung Fu, I'm not positive, else. and I should be, because this is a video game podcast, but I have no idea. Uh, we're, we say in the... We say in the in the intro, what we are, so you know, just just two guys. Yeah, we're just crass. we are not experts. We're crass commentaries. Yeah, crass commentaries. Commentary. Commentators. Commentators. Good God, <laughs> I like how I convinced you that the wrong word was right, and then you were like, "No, that's wrong," and then you said you said the right thing. No, we're not royal spuds. We're commentators. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was a yeah, good one. Like I like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what it's our next, go it's our next shirt. That. Two potatoes, one with the beard, one with the one with the glasses. Well, just commentators. That's your graphic design project. That's true. <laughs> Remember, you're gonna do a shirt a month. Brown dot, red dot. <laughs> I love the idea. I love the idea of you making these shitty fucking shirts and people buying them and not only buying them, but loving them. But like, because it's like, this means something to me. This shitty brown dot with red means something to me. I love that idea. Please let us know if you'd buy Tyler's (laughs) Royal Spuds t shirt. (laughs) Yeah. These two podcasters, one's a graphic designer, but the one who's not makes their T-shirt. The other one prepares meals for them. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, were we talking about this game? Sort of. Uh, what were we bitching about? Oh, Everything. So, yeah, I feel like... Um, it's got a polar bear with Speedos on. Yeah, <laughs> and they happen to be the like the hot pink Speedo color <laughs> like that uh, that uh, Nana's, Nana's rocking yeah. in. Um, yeah, and he's got like sh- he looks like he's wearing shades. He's got shades on. Yep. It's kind of weird because it's very like the polar bear looks very much like Bill Watterson drew him or something. You know, <laughs> he looks like it's weird because like he's he's giant. Mm-hmm. He's a giant bear, and it's like he's whenever he's out, he's like the biggest fucking thing on the screen. Oh yeah, these two to three of normal enemies. Yeah, totally. Because I mean, the the ice climbers are fucking squat little sprites. But I I also man, I had such an issue with the bonus stages because it changes things up because you will bounce off the blocks right, the in the bonus, bonus stage. stage. So just like I'm trying to get the vegetables and suddenly I'm just fucking all over the place before I can get a single one. I don't think I 
caught the fucking condor in any of the ten stages. That I did passed. it once. <laughs> I did it one time. I caught the condor. Those stages are so fucking hard, and I guess they should be. They're bonus stages, mm-hmm. so whatever. But yeah, you don't lose life if you fall off or anything. Yeah, it, it's not a big deal. But I mean, there. I mean, those are designed. I feel like like Cat Mario levels. We've talked about Cat Mario. Like I feel uh-huh. like where it's just like it feels like the game is trolling you. That's what Ice Climber. That like the bonus stages always felt like. Well, you're gonna think you're gonna be able to make this jump. However, we know you're not gonna realize there's a ledge above you that's gonna stop you, and you're gonna fall down this mm-hmm. hole that we set here specifically for when you try to make this impossible <laughs> jump. Like, that's very much what all the bonus stages felt like. By the way, uh, rule change. Yeah, right. Ch- Fuck you. Yeah. So I, I caught the condor once, uh, but I didn't know. I could have caught him twice, but the first time I went up there, I saw the fucking enemy that was that just carried a whole, like a fucking eggplant to the very top. That's mm-hmm. the first one you got to get, mm-hmm. uh, is the eggplant. You got to rescue them eggplants, uh, which is kind of programmed in my mind that eggplants are bad in video games. Because wasn't that like a no-no in like Adventure Island? Was it the bad thing? And then, like, the eggplant wizard in Kid Icarus. Yeah. And then something else with the eggplant. Guess what our next game is on the list. Oh, yeah. It I is always, Kid Icarus. I always wanted to play it, but I could never get past, like, the first four minutes of it. I had no clue what the fuck was going on. <laughs> Me too. It's going to be a fun <laughs> show. Everybody tune in for us shitting on another Nintendo classic. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad shitting on this game, but like I am also gonna tell you, Tyler, that it it's, feels so good to let this out. It's got the <laughs> I mean, this has the best average of all the lists that we've done. Like what do you mean the best average? Everything's so you know pretty good, you know, oh, out of I, all the lists that we've played, everything on this it's been good. Yeah. I mean, granted it's a little different than just like a ranking. Oh, list. I see. Comparing lists. Yeah, this the the NCC four to Genesis got, right. uh, this has the best average of like quality. Yeah, uh, I, I like, agree. So I far, like yeah. This is the first like Ugh, on the list. It's a dip. Yep. It's a dip, but I still don't think it's like it's not unplayable. Yeah. It's not a game I ever really want to play again. Oh but yeah, it, no, I won't. I won't play this again. But it's a game that like I enjoy playing for academic purposes. Mm. I mean, I know that sounds really fucking. <laughs> Wait till stupid. Mario is missing. We'll get some academic shit in. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the NES classic, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> The SNEX is just like 10 educational Mario games. Yeah, right. We do, dude, we need to do a show on uh, Donkey Kong Jr. math. Yeah, all oh, like, I mean, we have yeah, to yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny because um, when we did Donkey Kong Jr., the, the episode on Donkey Kong Jr., and I mentioned Donkey Kong Jr. math, I heard it mentioned on like a big gaming podcast, and I was like, okay. And they were talking about how horrible it is. And I was like, we mm-hmm. definitely have to do this. That's, I mean, Donkey Kong, that's one of the most, one of those things I want to do all the games for. I love yeah. to do all the Castlevanias, all the Donkey Kongs. Oh, dude, we're close to don- getting all the Donkey Kongs done, yeah. right? Because we've done Donkey Kong. We've done, we've done an episode on Donkey Kong Jr. We did Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3. We did yep. episodes on that. So we need to do, what, Donkey Kong 3 for the NES. And we did we did 64 Donkey as Kong well. Donkey Kong Jr. No, we did 3 for the SNES. Yeah, you're right. We did 3 because that's, ba- that's got the baby in it. <laughs> yeah, so we don't have a whole lot. We just do Tropical we're, Freeze. We're done. Donkey Kong <laughs> Land for the Game Boy. Yeah, that is true. And I, and we could do an episode on Donkey Kong 94. That's a great game. Oh, okay. That's yeah, a great I'm game. Down. All right. So thanks for hanging in there with our little, <laughs> with our little off-topic break. Name and break. shit that we've done. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's list things that we've done. <laughs> I've got my driver's license. I graduated from high school. <laughs> I kissed a girl. Mm, yeah. In that order. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I didn't, Dave, I didn't like this. No, I didn't like it either. Can I ask you a question? Uh-huh. I know you're. Tr- it feels like you're trying to wrap it up. Because I'm just like, what else do I have to say about it? Because like, there's not that much. It's just. Yeah. No, there's not no. much to it. I mean, it's very much an arcade game. Mm-hmm. But it, what's interesting about it is this is interesting. I think. Um, oh, uh, so I don't forget. Sorry. Uh, the bonus stages are timed. Nothing else is timed. In the oh game yeah. To get the bonus. Stage. That's the rule change you were mentioning. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm glad that you mentioned that. Um, because yes, I would run out of time. Mm-hmm. What the fuck was I, I talking derailed about? You. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, oh, I got a question to ask you. No, you're fine. You're fine. We're good. Mm-hmm. Um, can you tell me what those monsters were? Like, we talked about the polar bear, but there's this, like, little, like, I think it looks like a penguin chick, but it's got, like, little tiny human arms and little tiny human feet. Do you know the thing that I'm talking about? It kind of looks like a... Uh, like a, tan- a tangela? Like a tundra tangela? Oh, the Pokemon? Pokemon? Yeah. Yeah, kind of a little bit, but he looks like furry. I don't know if he was supposed to be, I, I think he's supposed to be an abominable snowman, but Maybe. he's very tiny. Snowlit. Very tiny. Uh, and then apparently there's a, um, I saw the sprite sheet and it was also kind of weird. I don't know if, 
these enemies turn up later in the game or if they just weren't used. Uh, like I saw sprites for a seal. I saw I saw that too, but I never came across one. I never came one in the game. Ne- so never came across maybe one for the Nintendo of America, they got rid of it because you're clubbing seals. Maybe, and so. they just left the sprites. Yeah. I don't know. But I also saw like some kind of like butterfly looking things too, and I didn't mm. notice those in the game either. So I don't know. What, I don't know what happens there. I don't know if you play through it again because what happens once you get to like Mountain Thirty Two and beat Mountain Thirty Two, the last mountain in the game. It loops back to mountain number one, and I don't know if it makes it more difficult or or changes, some or changes some enemies later on. I don't know, but my point is, I did all the mountains, and I was like, I'm done with this game forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did a third of them and said the same thing. <laughs> you were smart. Do you have any achievements? Uh, I do have some achievements. Or any more commentary? Um, you know, I feel like. I mean, I feel like it's covered, right? Yeah, there's not there's not a lot. Also, there's not anything to gush about. There's not, eh, ugh. Yeah, and I mean, I I really honestly, I think I'm probably being a little over negative mm-hmm. towards this game because I haven't gotten to be negative about a game in a long time. <laughs> so it's like, I feel like it's not really fair that I'm really taking a big old stinker on Ice Climber right mm-hmm. now. Um, but at the same time, I also think that it's not a great game. So, I mean, there's honesty in there, you know, where it's just like, if someone asked me, should I play Ice Climber? I would tell them, only for your own personal academic purposes. Just to have said you've played it. Right, exactly. So you understand. You experience (laughs) it. So, yeah, exactly. You could have a conversation about it if you wanted to. Are you looking for something fun to play? Oh, then I would never play this game because it's, (laughs) I don't know, maybe not never, but like put it way, 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 way down the list because there are so much more games. Play Ice Climbers. Put a finger in your butt when you masturbate. Just try things to try. Right, yeah, like, exactly. Know, yeah. Probably won't like it. Yeah. I mean, just give it put a, a shot. Yeah, put it's a tiny fine. sword in your butt. <laughs> 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 also, I'm so glad that you said play ice climbers because you're doing the southern thing. You're mm. adding an S on the end ice of the climbers. title because it's yeah. ice climber. I forever have called this game ice climbers. Me too. Yep. Forever. And it's because of... Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers. Ice it Climbers. Is, yep, it is 100% because of that. And yeah. it's like when I fired the game up, I was like, oh, it's Ice Climber. I have to remember that. Ice is Climber? No. Damn. <laughs> right. Ice is Climber. <laughs> is that like a training video game for ISIS? <laughs> ISIS Climber. <laughs> <laughs> or it's like if you download the ROM, the FBI fucking <laughs> kicks your door in. <laughs> or it's like, or it's, um, but it's the secret training facility. Like whoever clears all thirty-two mountains in ISIS climber, ISIS comes and tries to recruit you. What a weird <laughs> fucking entry <laughs> for a terrorist organization. All right, now we can find the guy who gets through all thirty-two mountains in ice climber. I also, can we please do? He, he will bring death to America. <laughs> Can we please do uh, a, a commercial for Isis Climber, uh, <laughs> the 1985 Nintendo Entertainment System <laughs> classic, Isis Climber? Good lord! And it oh god, it starts dark. It starts it starts with us holding a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> a giant eagle comes across and steals. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> no, we, it's good. That's a deep well. We could we yeah. could go on a bad tangent. Oh about yeah, that. we already have. We already have. I'm already trying to think like, what are Isis vegetables? <laughs> <laughs> then we just get racist. Yeah, right, I know. It's a, it's a slippery slope. That is a pun. All right. No, I don't have anything left to say about Ice Climbers, I don't guess. Any achievements then? Yeah, I've got some achievements. Do you? I do. Um, let's can we, let's start with yours. All right, my first one is Vegan Vengeance, and that is when you get all the vegetables in the bonus stage and catch the condor. Uh, the other one is Pacifist Pterodactyl. Pacifist Pterodactyl. So I needed two Ps for it to work. Uh-huh. Uh, and that is when you catch the condor and you've never swung your mallet once on the stage. Ah, nice. I like that. I've got a couple. So what I do is I will typically play a game that we're going to talk about on Twitch. You can find us on Twitch. We're Tadpog underscore podcast. Um, so I played Ice Climber and got some achievement requests from uh, viewers. This is, this is the best. This is the best of the best. Mm-hmm. First achievement is called Flipping the Bird. And this is from, this is from Ryan. <laughs> Former master of coin, Ryan. Uh, in order to unlock flipping the bird, uh, actually, what he said is not sure how to get it, but it feels obvious. Uh, the way to get it, I think, is you just kill the red bird with the mallet. 
Every uh, stage has like a red bird, mm-hmm. and um, usually the way to kill it is you jump up at it um, and pray that it's far enough from you that you put your mallet up above you before it slams into your face. Mm. That's what's really frustrating about the slow mallet animation, because like that mallet doesn't come up, man, until you're like halfway through your giant jump. And if anything comes at you while it's not up, you're fucking, you're done, you're toast. Ugh. So flipping the bird would be killing that fucking red That's bird. Good. Uh, which I assume is the baby condors or something. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. know. That makes sense. They're red. You, you kill their babies. Yeah, do that. <laughs> Murder. <laughs> we are ISIS climber. We are, we are really, <laughs> we are really doing this, huh? Okay. Uh, next achievement is comes from overseas Philip, and this achievement is titled "Clubbing with Seal." Uh, in order to unlock "Clubbing with Seal," you need to <laughs> hit a seal in the game while listening to a club remix version of a seal song. <laughs> My personal recommendation, of course, would be. Kiss, kiss by a rose. Kiss by a rose. Kiss I mean, it has rose. to be. Yeah. Are you ki- like giving a blowjob to listening to Kiss <laughs> Right. That old classic E fucked. <laughs> Everyone lost understands that. Lost the Battles that. of the Internet video. I know, man. When E fucked got hacked, like, we just mm. lost the best fucking, best comedy glory hole video in the yeah. entirety of the world. It's that and, and of course, Bad Toilet that are just like. Oh, Bad Toilet's we've gone. We've seen forever. and they're just gone. Kiss. Is it kiss by a rose or kiss from a rose? I don't know. I've uh, been. Is it I've been kiss by a rose? It's kiss by a rose, <laughs> or because uh, it's not going to be I've been kiss from, from a rose. rose. <laughs> that does sound like like that's the knockoff version. <laughs> well, it's like we could play kiss. We could play kiss by a rose and Ren and Stimpy if we change one word and note. <laughs> uh, that was a weird sentence. I never thought I would say. <laughs> my life <laughs> also I never thought I would take a logical path uh, from like a glory hole to seal to Ren and Stimpy like what kind of like my god alright uh, I just feel like that was a, that's what I was programmed to do from birth like when I like when my cells were like forming in the womb it was like this is this is God's plan for Dave <laughs> <laughs> if I die on the ride home tonight, you'll this know isn't it's my true. my will. It's God's plan. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. I got another achievement. Uh, and this is coming from Edgelord Kyle. I love this one. And I have to try to say it in a special voice. Even Andy Dufresne couldn't swim through this shit, which is a very bad Morgan Freeman. Uh, in order to unlock, I, I thought I, I thought he was here. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. I'm Randy Holland, well, aka Morgan, Morgan Freeman. Freeman. <laughs> Country Morgan Freeman. Cranberries a delicacy. <laughs> uh, in order to unlock, even Andy Dufresne couldn't swim through this shit. You need to get the game over in one of the brown ice floors. Um, there is ice in this game, and all the floors are different colored. Uh, there's there's green section at the bottom, brown in the middle, and then white ice at the top. I'm assuming that the green is supposed to be grass and the brown is supposed to be stone, but the name of the game isn't Grass Stone Ice Climber, <laughs> is it? <laughs> so it's brown ice. It's poo-poo ice. Terra Climber. Yeah, Terra, terra Climber. Uh, and I've got one more achievement. This uh, credit to Time Lord Josh Edwards. <clears throat> Hold on, I gotta do it. Since I did a voice for the other one. You're as cold as ice. Paradise. Paradise. <laughs> In order to unlock you're as cold as ice, uh, which wasn't nearly high enough. Let me try again. You're as cold as ice. Nailed ice. it. No, it's perfect. Go. Yeah. Uh, you need to know that was a real song for the longest yeah, time. Yeah, really? You thought it was I just a Dana, Dana Carvey bit? Carvey. Yeah, yep. no, I love it. Uh, man, that Dana Carvey HBO <laughs> special, like that is like part Jesus of my choice. Yep, it's part of my person. <laughs> it's a weird. It's like that was like a thing that I saw that like shaped me. Yeah, where it's like I, this, you're gonna be a I little 100% bit different agree. because you experienced this. Yep. <laughs> It made it was weird. It made like You've a weird added a connection. layer to your sense of humor now because right. of this. Yeah, my sense of humor leveled up. Yep. Really, it seriously yep. did. Um, to an unlock to unlock your as cold as ice, you need to die repeatedly from respawning into an area that is impossible to move from without dying. Which fucking happened to me. Ugh. I fucking ha- it like I would die and then I would be I would respawn like on one tiny tile on a le- like on a ledge. Everything else is just empty fucking dead space yep. and it's like I can't jump to either ledge because my head's going to hit the ledge above me. The only good thing is that you could choose what mountain you start from. Yeah, I mean that's, that is that's something. Good, that is a good thing, I guess. Let's not make you play more of this game than you have to. Just Pick where you want to start. Right. It's fine. 
There's something else we need to talk about, um, and that is when you do not make it at the end of the bonus stage, mm -hmm. when you inevitably fail it, uh, you're treated to a screen of Popo, if you're playing one player, mm -hmm. crying into his sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of looks like he is dabbing. Is that is that what the kids uh -huh. did? I love it. Three or four years ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, oh, Brandon, you used to do it all the time. Oh, really? Now, now she uh, cringes at the thought of it. Oh, I love it. I love it. She has her own regretful recall. Oh, because what's that one? Some kid whose dad is a congressman. He did it during like the congressional photo, and Paul uh -huh. Rahm was like, "What are you doing?" Because <laughs> he was trying to like freeze frame the dab while he was his picture <laughs> taken. That's what the dean at Murray did when my sister graduated. <laughs> and the fucking, like, the, the student body went wild, man, which just tells me, like, it was kind of one of those moments where it's like, I'm old, and I know that is, like, a cringeworthy thing right now, but you don't know. And that tells me you're getting old, too. <laughs> you, still, you still think that you, are, that you are cool. It's already started. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because, God, now I'm just thinking about every time she would say something funny, she would just, dab. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's hilarious. Like, just, now it's been a long time since I've seen her do it. Like she was announcing her punchline? Yep. Oh, dude. Then what I need to do is next time I see her, tell a joke and then punctuate the punchline with, with the dab. <laughs> uh, so that's all. That's all the achievements I have. And the only tangent that I have. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I do have some questions Fuck for yes. you. Fuck yes. Uh, on this show, we like to rate games on um, a very uh, well-established... Using the scientific method. Yeah, mm -hmm. using the scientific method for a very well-established rating system. Tyler, mm -hmm. if you were to give this game a beard that sums up how you feel about it, what kind of beard would it be? I would give it the beard of Shamshirpun. Wahoo. Well, huh? Shamshirpun is uh, the ninth person to be recorded as dying on Mount Everest in oh. 1924. Oh, okay. Uh, he died from a brain aneurysm. Oh, Lord. Probably from thinking about how this could be a game one <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> I'm sure that was it. <laughs> he was uh, like a Pakistani soldier, part of a expedition group in, in 1924 to climb Mount Everest. My God. I thought it was going to be you because you have a beard. <laughs> I'm assuming he has a beard. He had a that... mustache. Oh, he had a mustache. mustache. I thought it would be you it's because... the only person I could find... In the big record of people who have died on Mount Everest that had some sort of facial hair. Clearly, they didn't have enough. Yeah, you that's need, why they, most of them probably died. You need more. Their face froze. <laughs> they, they and what happened was their face froze, and since the beard like covers the mouth, they weren't able to tell their companions that they were I'm dying. dying. <laughs> Oil can. Yeah. Meanwhile, their their uh, party with their beards are like, "What is Frank trying to say?" <laughs> I don't know. Let's let's climb this mountain and live. Yeah, let's forget his beardless let's ass. Let's not have a brain aneurysm <laughs> like this loser. Fucking nice. Shamsher. <laughs> nice aneurysm, Shamsher. <laughs> God. I'm going to beat him in the afterlife, and he's going to kick me in the fucking dick. <laughs> Tyler. Yes. I enjoyed that beard, but I thought you were going to use your beard because you climbed Everest. Well, yeah, but I, I mean, I lived, so. Oh, so it specifically needs to be a dead person? Yeah, it had to be someone who failed like this game. It's a failure. Because it's a bad game. Like I yeah. get it. All right. <laughs> Tyler. Yes, Dave. If you were to give this game a pair of glasses that sums up how you feel about it, what kind of glasses would you give it? I would have to give it the, the aerial goggles of Maurice Wilson. Who is Maurice Wilson? Who is the 12th person recorded to have died on Mount Everest, and he died in 1934 attempting a solo climb. How did he die? Brain aneurysm. Uh, they assumed he... Not a brain aneurysm. Mount um, Everest is a brain aneurysm capital of the world. <laughs> I don't know if you people know that, but it's important that you do. It's, there's a big cover-up. Mount Everest isn't real. It's just a place that you go, and the government gives you brain aneurysms. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> the, the aneurysm -y. Uh He might, I can't remember, he might have been the one who died when he slipped in his ice pick. Oh man! Hit him in the chest and killed him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The internet doesn't remember how you died, Maurice. It's. it's I don't remember. The, rest, the internet said so. I don't recall. Rest in peace, Maurice. <laughs> but he was found like ten years later or some shit. Don't yeah, worry. Like, we'll. They'll name a monkey on Friends after you. There have been expeditions to go clear off the bodies of people who have like died on yikes. the trail. People won't have to see them. <laughs> 
<laughs> Yikes! Just because they don't like decompose. Yeah, they just see like yeah, because they're just <laughs> frozen, frozen, just frozen there. bodies. Just like I almost like think it'd be cool. Level of Mario, you know, just enemies frozen right? in blocks of ice. Well, it's like when I like to think when somebody gets to the top of Everest, it's like they get treated to a Meat Boy style video of like everybody before them dying on Everest, <laughs> and it's all sped up and shit. Because I was reading it, because I'd I'd heard that like. Climbing Everest is sort of easy now with Sherpa guides and like portable oxygen and things like that. Like people who are out of shape or an an elderly, like an 80 year old man did it. Like it's no big deal. But like four people died this year. I still don't think I could do it, man. Yeah. Four people died. After reading that, I was like, oh, no. No, no, no. no. no, That's a dangerous thing. I would never try it. But what like. Most people die of either an avalanche. Oh, yeah. Or exposure. Oh, man. Can you. Uh, People die of, I forget what they're called, like giant blocks of ice just squishing them. Oh, my (laughs) God. Dude, can you imagine? I've always thought that drowning would be like the worst way to go. But can you imagine like dying in an avalanche? Like, can Uh, you imagine being fucking buried under snow? (laughs) Yeah, until you just can't anymore. (laughs) So good beards and glasses, dude. Now I'm bummed out. The latest person to die <laughs> fell down a 200 meter crevasse. Oh no! So you imagine? No, I'm gonna climb Everest, <laughs> fall 200 meters to your oh. death in a big crack. <laughs> yeah. Or the people who died in an avalanche at base camp. Like, oh wow! Let's climb this mountain. Nope, we're dead. Let, let, <laughs> let's climb that mountain tomorrow. <laughs> oh, the mountain killed us. <laughs> oh god. So let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Tad, when Tad Buck gets ten thousand dollars, we'll Buck. climb Mount Everest dressed as the ice climbers. No, <laughs> ten thousand. I'm going to need more than 100, that. A hundred thousand. We we would die. A hundred thousand a month, dude. Like we would die if like four oh, yeah. if yeah, four yeah. like fit adults yeah, died yeah. on that mountain uh-huh. this year. Uh-huh. You and I do not stand no, a fucking right. chance. Like we don't stand a chance. <laughs> <laughs> like we're gonna have like zebra cakes like falling out of our backpacks as we're trying to like, <laughs> that sound like I'm trying to catch a pack of zebra <laughs> zebra cakes that's falling out back and I fall down a two hundred meter crevasse. No, Tyler, it's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I go to grab you. I go to grab your hand, but like it slips because like my hand is just permanently coated with astroglide. (laughs) (laughs) It doesn't freeze, oddly enough. (laughs) No, it doesn't. Oh Oh, man, God, Tyler. Yes, Dave. I enjoy laughing about death with you for a few minutes. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, I have a few other questions for you. All right. Uh, There's a little segment that we like to call "How much is this game on price charting." Hmm. If you were to buy this game loose on price charting, what do you think the average price is right now? Um, I will I will guesstimate twenty five dollars. Twenty five dollars. Care to elaborate as to why? That seems a little. That seems like a little high. Because on uh, research, because I was watching uh, the two player game gameplay. Yeah. You and I, unfortunately, get did not get a chance to and play And it looks awful. It looks so awful trying to play two-player. Oh, it looks like it is harder to yeah, play two-player than it would be easier. It's like, and it looked to me like when we tried to play uh, the new Super Mario Brothers, and it's just like when you do the multiplayer, when four people are playing, uh-huh. and it's just like, oh, this level, I could see it being beatable playing by myself, but since it's like four people not really knowing what we're doing at any given time, it's like so difficult. Yeah, somebody scrolls up a little bit, you're dead. Right. You respawn, you fall to your death. You respawn, you fall, fall to your, your death. death again. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah. Nope. Actual retail value of Ice Climber for the NES on price charting at the time of this recording is $13.72. Because okay. on one of those videos, they said it was a, a rarer game, so I was aiming a little high. What do you think the average price of this game is new on price charting, Tyler? Oh, if it, if it was uh, if it was a release game, new, uh, hmm, one hundred and twenty five dollars. Actual retail value of Ice Climber new on PriceCharting dot com is two thousand five hundred sixty one dollars <laughs> oh, and eleven cents. So damn, all I have to do is not make many of those in one year. Like I could I feel like I could make my salary in a month making bootleg new ice climber cartridges. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Huge market for those. Yeah, oh yeah, they're going to sell Everybody's just buying them up. Uh-huh. Mm, it's going to be so oh, I'm going to be living it easy. Of the best play best way to play this game is to leave it in the box. <laughs> yeah. So That's actually written on the box. <laughs> just just leave, just leave us in here. <laughs> I've got uh, 10 more questions for you. Oh, I've got yes. a quiz put together if you're yeah, interested in that. I am. Uh, before I get, I guess before I get to the quiz, 
Tyler, do you think that Ice Climber belongs on the NES Classic? No, I think there are better games that could be on this system. I agree with you. I feel like this is a game that was put on because it was a Nintendo game, mm-hmm. uh, and they didn't have to worry about paying anybody any kind of licensing or anything like that. I, yep. I, I honestly think that's why it's on here. Um, I don't think it's great. I think you should only play it if you feel like taking a little academic field trip. Yep. So enough of that bullshit. Uh-huh. Tyler, I put together a quiz that is ice climbers related. Okay. So when I was trying to put this together, I was like, well, what kind of climbing quiz could I put together? And as I got to thinking about it, I was like, you know what I did more than climb in this video game? Was fall down into holes mm-hmm. and die. Mm-hmm. So I've got a quiz put together that I've named I've Fallen and I Can't Get Up quiz. <laughs> There is a theme to this, and it's going to make, once you figure out the theme, which I think you will do very, very early, mm. it's going to make answering all of these very easy. Okay. Okay? All right. I, a lot of these, I think, I think you're going to, I think you're going to fucking ace this quiz for the most part. There are a few curveballs in there, of course. Dave specials, mm-hmm. I like to call yeah. them. Uh, Coming but, in hot. I think you're going to be good. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Statement one. A gargoyle's head snaps, sending this swordsman into a fiery pit. Gargoyle head snaps. A gargoyle's head snaps, sending this swordsman into a fiery pit. Man, I feel like I should know that, but I don't. Uh, I'll give you a hint. This I just keep thinking of Frollo slipping off the gargoyle in Hunchback. Judge Claude Frollo is correct oh, answer. Really? Okay. You nailed it. Question number one, right. complete. <laughs> On to number two. Good job. At, it was swordsman that threw me off. I was like, because he was a priest. He, so. But he was wielding a sword at the time. Oh, okay. So I called him a swordsman. Okay. Pro, pro <laughs> works. You got it. Number two, after taking a nasty spill, this uncle became a king fit for a meal. This king or this uncle? Say that again. A king can be an uncle. Those things aren't mutually exclusive. <laughs> okay. Oh, a kunkle. Yes. <laughs> after taking a nasty spill, mm-hmm. this uncle became a king fit for a meal. For, I just keep thinking of this. This, this uncle uh-huh. became a king uh-huh. fit for a meal. Scar? Scar is correct okay. <laughs> because he is eaten by the hyenas after uh, falling. Okay. Because <laughs> I was like, is Mufasa or Scar the right answer? Uncle, it's got to be Scar. You nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> so I'm, you've caught on to the theme, I see. <laughs> Question three. No one fights like him, Tyler. No one douses lights like him, Tyler. And certainly no one falls like him. Oh, wow, that's Gaston. That is Gaston, <laughs> correct. Uh, I just want there's this a This is entirely based off <laughs> being a stepfather. <laughs> yes, no, I love it. And actually, damn it, I forgot. I was going to mention before uh, before we took the quiz, I was going to see if you wanted to bring in one of the girls oh, to God. help you. Oh, they would nail it immediately. <laughs> also, hey, if you don't know how these Disney movies end, sorry. <laughs> Whoops. But look, it's a Disney movie. I mean, I, I assume when you go into a Disney movie, you're like, the villain's probably not going to win. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. The hero's an orphan. Yeah, just keep going. Right? Yeah, exactly. Statement four, Tyler. This is a hard one. Mm. Okay? okay? This is a hard This is one of the curveballs, but I think you might be able – this might be one of your bardic knowledge, like you're going to like whip it out. Okay. He may have whooped a pack of bloodthirsty crocodiles, but this poacher couldn't defeat the waterfall. Oh, what is his name? Oh, you know who it is, though. It's Tarzan. Um, I want to say, I think it's Tarzan. I can't remember his name, though. Uh, can I give you a hint? Uh-huh. His sidekick loves eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I don't and is a monitor lizard. It is mm-hmm. Percival McLeach from The Rescuers Down Under. Oh, okay. I was way off. No, I mean, you were kind of close, man. I mean, with like... I mean, as far as like the jungle, and I mean, Australia isn't a jungle, but I mean, it's different than not. It's not here. Yeah, so I feel like yeah, because the the villain in Tarzan it was like a poacher trying to camp- capture all the gorillas, and he dies whenever he falls. Off. They're like in front of a waterfall, and he falls on one of the trees, and his scarf gets caught in a branch, and he hangs himself. You are going to be very prepared for an upcoming question, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe not. We'll see. Uh, Tyler, next question. His plans to take over the monarchy and rule over all Mousedom is thwarted by Big Ben and a Sherlock Holmes knockoff. This is a very hard question because this is from a this is from a not popular Disney cartoon. It's a Sherlock Holmes knockoff. Yeah, the key the key to the question is really in that in that phrase. Shit. 
I can't. Because I would even accept the name of the movie. Do you know the name of the movie? <sighs> I remember seeing this I'll one as a kid. It, I'll know it after you say it, but I, nothing's coming to mind. You right ready now. for it? Yep. It's Radigan from The Great Mouse Detective. I remember seeing the cover. I don't think I've actually seen the movie there. I, I saw it as a kid, and I remember not loving it and never watching it again. Mm. Um, but weirdly, as an adult, I've like weirdly after like putting this quiz together and like watching like 10 clips of Disney villains fall. <laughs> Cause that's how they kill them. Cause yeah. I mean, it's like you gotta kill them by falling cause you can't show you fucking remember. blood and guts. Yeah. And so I mean, just <laughs> Disney movies are just littered with off screen <laughs> deaths. Man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next question. This is number six, Tyler. She dies in her final form after being stabbed by an enchanted sword and belly flopping into flaming brambles. Is that Mad Madam Mim? It is Maleficent. Maleficent. But that is a really good guess because Mad Madam Mim does turn into yep. a Dargon. So <laughs> Dargon. you were close. Number seven, Tyler. She falls to her death after lightning strikes the cliff ledge that she is standing on, and then a boulder falls after her. Certainly not the fairest death of them all. Uh, the evil queen? The evil queen from Snow White. Correct. Very good, Tyler. Number eight, this marksman's fall is punctuated by a gruesome neck snap mm. via Vine. Vine, I can't remember his name. I even watched because Brandy, did a, Brandy Jr. did a play um, about, all about neck snapping. Uh huh. Well, couldn't, I was couldn't stop those kids they, from snapping necks. <laughs> well, they did Chicago, and that was surprising. <laughs> yes, that yeah. is kind of surprising. Uh-huh. I don't I remember the guy's name though. Can you tell me the movie? Tarzan. All right, Tarzan. Yeah. That's right. Uh, so half credit, the name of the poacher, or uh, was, uh, or the hunter, Cecil Clayton. Clayton. Cecil right. Clayton. Yep. He's got two first names. Yeah, so he's evil. Of course. <laughs> Tyler, number nine. She survives her humiliating fall down a snowbank, but her car definitely died. Her car died? Mm-hmm. So you got some hints. She. Uh-huh. She has a car. There's a car in this movie. Disney villain in a car. Disney villain in a car. Climatic car chase Herbie, at the end of the movie. Herbie fully loaded. Oh man, yeah. that is a good fucking guess. <laughs> it is Cruella Deville. Oh, because she wrecks that badass fucking light hot rod mm-hmm. that she built with Tim One the of Tool my Man least Taylor. Favorite Disney movies. Did not care. Really, about I loved Dalmatians. 101 Dalmatians. I loved it. Number ten, Tyler. This exiled witch is stabbed by a boat and hit with lightning before falling back into the ocean depths. Uh, Ursula. That is, in fact, <laughs> Ursula. Very good. You got some of those right. Some you got of most of those right. Yeah, that was hard. I didn't keep track, but I'd say you probably got a B. <laughs> Did okay. You got a B. Maybe. <laughs> if Tyler didn't get a B, post a comment in uh, the Facebook group and let us know. <laughs> <laughs> Find a way to numerically give me a B on that quiz. Right, which is very, very doable because it's <laughs> 10 questions. We got. Th- if, yeah. if we had been paying attention, we could have told you the grade. <laughs> That's oh, it, man. man. That's all I got. Yeah. You want to take a call? Um, you know what? I'm to be perfectly honest with you. I'm not set up. I don't have the board set up to do that right okay. now. Okay. Uh, and this, like this, we got to get a new cable because this fucking oh, cable. I forgot about that. You're is right. really bad. Yeah. Like I'm worried if I plug my phone into the board, it, it is oh, right, and yeah. it's gonna kill our fucking ears. Yep. And then yeah, it's gonna be a nightmare. And our listeners' ears. Yeah. So let's. I'm gonna order a new cable, and then we can go back. We can go because we were on a good roll there with calls. Yeah. Uh, I do have an email. How about that? Yeah, I have an email that, email that I've been meaning to read for like a really long time. Uh, this is from, I don't know if I should use their whole name, so I'll just say this is from Jamie. Uh, and the subject is the Fallout episodes. Um, they also didn't say whether or not I should read this on the air, so uh, I hope you don't mind. Uh, but uh, Jamie says, hey guys, I recently came to your show after it got a mention on the Upper Memory Block podcast. So hey, Upper Memory Block Podcast, thank you for mentioning yeah. us. I think that's really fucking cool. Uh, I'll have to check you guys out. Um, and Jamie continues, and I got to say that I'm digging what you're doing. Fallout episodes are great, and I just couldn't help but chuck in my two cents for what it's worth. Now, after hearing you all talk about the various characters you created in Fallout, I just wanted to ask if you guys had ever done a playthrough of a total sack of shit human garbage person mm-hmm. who seeks redemption for the rest of the game. Uh, for example, I blew Megaton to bits trying an evil playthrough. 
uh, I never do evil. Uh, but uh, when I got my apartment and uh, I basically just felt bad, and in an attempt to right the wrongs I had done, I naturally went on a killing spree in Tin Penny Tower, yeah. bringing judgment to all the residents. Because if you don't, that one ghoul will. So yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I love that whole. I love that quest. Fallout Three is so fucking good, dude. Yes, it is. Fallout Three is so fucking good. Mm-hmm. That was like that was like a watershed game for me because it was like, oh my god, I've been kind of out of video games for a little while. Me. Too. And it's like, this yep. is one where it's like, this is what video games are now. It's shit like, like this I can happen Bioshock now. Bioshock to Fallout 3. So it's like, holy shit. It's I know. Consoles. Yeah. I rem- yeah. I remember you mentioning that. And it's mm-hmm. like, that might be why I thought of Fallout 3 that way. Because I was like thinking about games that were like that for me. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Fallout 3, like that and Oblivion were just like, whoa, holy shit. This is what video games are. Mm-hmm. I'm back, baby. Uh, uh, let's see. Jamie continues, uh, for the remainder of the game, I then set about bringing peace and justice to the wasteland. Anyways, that's my two cents. Love the show. Jamie. Jamie, thank you for that Mm -hmm. email. Uh, have you ever played a game like that, Tyler? Uh, I usually play one way or the other because I played, I didn't do an evil playthrough in, um, Fallout 3, but I did in New Vegas. Uh, because in Fallout, although in Fallout 3 to get all the achievements, which I did, uh, you did have to get to, um, like level, like 10, 20, and 30 or something like that with a certain karma rating. So I had to get through each one of those with, with evil karma. But most of them I would just like kill a bunch of people, level up, get the achievement, and then restart. So I never really... But my evil playthrough was New Vegas when I made a a um, bare-knuckle brawler for the Legion. Oh, nice, that, yeah. That was, a, that was a fun playthrough. I feel like the Fallout games are a game that they need to turn achievements off for. Or just give you one achievement that's worth all the points or trophies or whatever. Mm-hmm. Because it's like... It honestly kind of makes me a little sad, like hearing that you like changed the way that you played for oh, the achievement. I, I beat it, and then I went back. Oh, okay, okay, and cool. tweaked previous save files to get all the achievements. I got you. Good. So you did it. Yeah. You did it a good way because it's like I feel like man, I don't like that the meta would like shape somebody's playthrough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I feel like that game is so rewarding when you play it the way that you want to play it. Yeah. The only redemption really. This only, the only similar thing that I've ever done in a video game that I can think of came com- came completely organically. I, I know I've mentioned it on the show before, but maybe it's been a while. When I played Bioshock the first time, mm-hmm. I killed the little sisters. Yeah, this, that's shocking to me. Really? Yeah. I killed them. I killed them. I snapped them little bodies open, sucked their juices out, (laughs) uh, which I didn't feel good about that part, but I didn't do it for the, I didn't do it for the power. I did it because uh, the game essentially, the narrative tells you that the person who created these things was a Nazi. Yeah, and they're mo- they're sort of monsters, basically. And they look and yeah. they look like monsters. So it's like I put those two things together. I'm like, all right, created by a Nazi, they look like monsters. We got to kill these. It things. doesn't explain it well that like you can extract the atom from them and save them. Yeah, it's it's not conveyed to you well. No, and and even if even if it was. Like, I still wouldn't have changed. Like, I mean, like, even if I knew, oh, I could extract the atom from them and still get, still gain power, but, um, but not as much or whatever, it it wouldn't have changed my fucking playthrough. Cause, like, it really was like this, this, I know it looks like a girl, but it is an evil creature. Like, I mean, I just assumed that it was just programmed by a Nazi to do, to carry out Nazi shit. Mm. Um, so I I killed them until it's revealed what they actually are and who she is. And it's like I was able to – spoilers, minor spoilers, sorry, for Bioshock. But like uh, if you don't want to hear this, I guess skip ahead a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it is revealed that, I mean, she is responsible for these girls and um, that it's actually kind of nice because like I feel like she gets a redemption story yeah. kind of. I find it like – you're kind of forced into a situation where you have to forgive her. And from that moment forward, I saved the little sisters. So that was kind of like, that's kind of like a redemption that's arc true. a yeah. little bit. Cause I think really, um, cause the audio quality is bad and we shoehorned all the Bioshocks into one game, one episode. So I feel like it wouldn't be a bad idea to eventually play through the Bioshock, uh, remaster remaster and do an episode over just the original Bioshock. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm down for that. I mean, that. eventually. I'm down for that. It, um, dot, dot, dot. Eventually. eventually. It's just kind of, I just feel weird because we've never, like, re-recorded an episode. That's sure. my that's my only, like, what, what, what yeah. moment about that. 
uh, because then uh, that opens the door for a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, do Kirby, Kirby's Dream Course again. I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like, well, we don't, uh, you know, we don't have a leg to stand on at that point. It's like clearly we do re-record episodes. No, I've got two legs to stand on. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm not doing that game again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough then. As long as you're willing to be the backbone, uh-huh, then yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's re-record fucking Bioshock. I'm good with it. I'll, I'll go off on people like Taryn went off on that one girl uh, in the Deathly Hallows that she had like... <laughs> with the let me talk to your manager hair? Yeah, well, she, what did she say? So she hadn't seen all the Harry Potters. She just wanted to hang out with us. We were all going to the movies. She's right. like, okay, well, I'll go see that. And she asked a question about like Dobby. And someone at the row ahead of us just turned around and gave her the worst fucking look. <laughs> and like Taryn saw her do it. And Taryn just looked back at her. What the fuck are you looking at? And she turned around real quick. She's like, no, nah, bitch. You can't just like, stupid fucking cunt looking at me like that. Turn around. I'm trying to have a good fucking time. Fuck you. And the woman just like stone still looked straight for the whole rest of the evening. Uh can I ask you a question? Uh, mm-hmm. How much did Taryn had to drink, or was a stone sober? Not at that point. She was just like, "That's great." She's like, "All those assholes at Hooters have taught me not to take fucking shit from idiots." Fuck I, this lady. <laughs> I love, I love that because like it takes me a little bit of mm-hmm. drinking to get there. Yeah. But like, I always love it when I'm in that zone <laughs> where it's like, I'm sorry to bring up Randy from South Park again, but like you get to this zone where it's just like, I thought this was America. <laughs> Which that episode makes me laugh it's so, so fucking good. hard because like I get that attitude, like not about like. America, you know, it's like it doesn't come out the same way, but I get, I very much get to that point where it's like I've drank enough and I haven't died. Clearly, I'm invincible. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, anything else? We good? Uh, yeah, we're, we're good. good. You wanna, let's close it up. Close that's it been up. Ice Climber. Yeah, that's, I, that's an Ice Climber. I thought this was a fun one to record. Uh, I'm with you. Yeah, I like this. Thanks for listening, everybody. You can find the show on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and YouTube. Uh, so you missed the next episode, Kid Icarus. Kid, Kid Icarus. Of uh, Captain and the Game Master's fame. <laughs> right. So. Uh, Smash Brothers fame. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. it's like yeah. that's how I know Pit as well. Or it's like, I knew Kid Icarus was a game and I tried to play it and then I stopped. Yeah. It's like, oh, what the fuck is going <laughs> oh, on with this? Oh, boy. Thing? Oh, yeah, boy. That be, was. Yeah. Well, I'll, yeah I don't fine. want to get into it right now. Yeah. So, hey, uh, do you have chocolate you want to send to Choco Chica? Do you have hot sausage you want to send to us? You know, whatever, anything. Uh, garbage you need to throw away that you'll <laughs> you just pay a shipping fee for. Your garbage. <laughs> uh, you can send anything to Tadbox Studios, care of Nicole Nance, P.O. Box 3785, Paducah, Kentucky, four, zip code 42002. There you go. Uh, what else do I have to say? Oh, shirts. You want a shirt? Shirts, want a shirt, 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 shirts. Everybody! <laughs> shirt, 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 shirt. You're leaving me hanging. Yeah. You're supposed to join in. Because I'm just like, what? where's that from? I'm unfamiliar. Yeah, no, you don't know the reference? Mm. Shot, 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 oh, shot, shot. Oh, okay. It's a bad, I mean, yeah, it's a bad joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you could have, like, done me a solid. Shirts, shirts, <laughs> shirts. You were looking at me like, are what, you doing a racist thing is, right what now? What is this? <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> what is this chant of shirts? Speaking of uh, chants and uh, things that are confusing, I had a shower thought earlier today. I got down like a we- I went down a weird rabbit hole. That and this is maybe even something I shouldn't. You don't mention. have just imaginary arguments you win all the time in the shower. Do you do, do. Yeah. do you do that too? Do you do that too? I love yeah, it. Yeah, I'm like the most brilliant debater in the world in my head uh, in the shower. Dude, it's fucking crazy. I shut fuckers down. I love that you also do that because it's like, do you ever do that and then like get out of the shower like legitimately mad at the person you imagine having an argument with? No, I just trounce them. Oh so no, god, because I do that. I'll see them and gloat. Uh, right? Like I get out of the shower and I'm like. The nerve. <laughs> I'm like toweling <laughs> off angrily. <laughs> Singing the DuckTales theme. <laughs> um, so, or Rescue Rangers, you take your pick. Um, I was in the, I had a shower thought earlier. I was like, what could I, could I, I'm thinking about Twitch because I've been streaming on Twitch. And I was like, well, and like some people like do characters and stuff on Twitch. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, if I did a character, like what, what would be a funny thing to do? And I was like, I know it would be funny to do a judge. Like to just just like show up in a fucking wig and a gown and like just play it as a judge. And like, <laughs> of course that isn't super funny, but <laughs> of course it isn't. Of course it isn't. But like in my mind at the moment, I'm like, I'm like really into it. I'm like, yeah, man, this could be like really good. And then I'm like, okay, so Give like my own Netflix spinoff. Oh man, Judge it's gonna be Day. Judge Day. Well, I can't use my own name, so we'll do like Judge David. Judge David. <laughs> The Honorable Judge David presiding, <laughs> and I got a gavel and shit. 
And then I judge the game at the end of the stream. I'm like, I give this game third degree murder. Slam, slam, slam. <laughs> so, so I was like, oh, I went down deep, buddy. Like, it goes, like I thought I thought more about this shit. I didn't stop immediately. Like, uh, Dave, this is not a, this is a, a bad idea. B, a thing you would never have the fucking drive to do in a million. Consume the length of your shower. A million. It did. I actually yeah. spent more time in the shower than I normally do thinking about this. And it's like, I got to the point where it's like, okay, well then, what do I do if someone asks if I'm a real judge? <laughs> And I was like, well, I want to judge school. Yeah, right. I, I'm, yes, I was, I'm a judge apprentice, uh, <laughs> but I, I'm para judge. So I um, uh, was like, well, yeah, just tell them I'm a real judge. No big deal. And then I was like, well, what if they say a judge in, in what, what country? And I'm like, well, I got to come up with a weird country name. This is, this is what happened in the shower. This is what I thought about. <laughs> And what happened was I was like, well, I need, I'm going to be kind of like a United States judge. So it has to be like a play on words for the United States. And then like, as I was thinking that I jumbled up the words United <laughs> States of America in my mind and it came out in my head as, oh, I'll be the judge of the United States of America. And then, <laughs> and then it was like my thought, like my, 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 the words, like the sentences in my head just went radio silent. <laughs> And then it was like, it picked right back up where it's like, I'm surprised that's not the name of a hate group I've heard before. <laughs> How is that not a, th is that a thing and I don't know about oh, it? Oh man, April 1st, please, please do Twitter. <laughs> It's Judge, Judge David, David of the United States of America. Of the United States of America. <laughs> One night only. Oh my God! I might have to fucking do it, man. I might fucking have to do it. Would you? Would you be there for uh, me? Yes. Would you be bailiff? Yeah. <laughs> How does you stand in the background behind you silently? The entire time is just gonna the yeah. theme to night court is gonna be on loop. <laughs> Low in the background. We're doing this. We're doing this. It's gonna happen. Oh. And what's great is everyone's gonna forget about it between now and then, me included. <laughs> and then someone will remind me one week out and I'll scramble to put it together. It'll and be who stressful. Will that be? Phil Hawkins. It'll Phil be Hawkins. Phil. Be the one. <laughs> yeah, it'll be Phil for sure. Sandwich boat. Oh my God. <laughs> Tyler, you know what? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love you. I love you. I'm really glad that we do this show. Mm -hmm, me too. Uh, and other people are really glad that we do it, so much so that they uh, donate to us on Patreon. We do have a Patreon. Uh, you can find us at patreon.com slash tadpog. Uh, huge thank you to everybody who donates there. We are going to be recording this month's bonus episode at the end of this week uh, with John mm -hmm, and Ian mm -hmm. uh, for our year in review. We're going to be doing that as a Patreon bonus episode. So if you want to hear that, uh, I'm sure we're going to get uh, pretty drunk and uh, say things that we shouldn't. So yeah, <laughs> there we go. If you're not chipping in a buck, uh, you I want to hear how it. racist John can be. Can be throw in a dollar, not is. Just can be, <laughs> can be <laughs> potentially. Um, I don't even. Oh God, we got. <laughs> he got mad at us for that. We got to cut that out. I for real got to cut that out. How about just clarify? John is not a racist. I uh, disclaimer. Not a racist. John is disclaimer, not a racist. John Turley is not a racist. He is not at all. He just thinks whites are the best. He is not a <laughs> racist. <laughs> this is out. <laughs> no. This is out. This is out. This is out. If ever, I, this is going to sound <laughs> fucked up. If ever there was like the hint of a rift in my relationship with John, oh, okay. it is because of that. Okay. So I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I said it. So I said it. All right. Well, if you're, John, if you're claiming full responsibility. But John is not a racist. It's just a funny thing to poke fun of him at. And I shouldn't even say a rift because it was like one of those things where it's like, I could just tell it bothered John. Yeah. And it's like, because John usually doesn't bring things up to me, but it's like he brought that up to me. So yeah. I was like, okay, this clearly bothers John. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it would bother me too. <laughs> like, what? It would bother you someone just called you a racist? Some friends, on a some friends of mine have like a podcast that <laughs> went out to a few thousand people just like, oh man, you'll never hear this horrible racist thing that he said. But it's a doozy. <laughs> nope, John is not a racist in any for way, shape, or form. <laughs> uh, what's what's Judge David's ruling on John? <laughs> ding, ding, not a racist. <laughs> slam, slam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that's all I got. Yeah, we're on Facebook. Patreon. We're on Twitter. You can find us there. You can call us if you want. We, we promise we're going to get back to calls. 270-883-2555. Also... Uh, we have a Discord now, so if you want to get in on that, I guess just tell me. 
<laughs> and I'll send you a link because I don't know how to tell you to get there um, uh, via non-text. Well, as as I learned graphic design to have all all the t shirts out, oh, yes. out there, uh, you can get the one t shirt that's amazing that Dave designed uh, exclusively. There are so many bootlegs, but the exclusive know. Tad Bog official. And I haven't fought the bootleggers at yeah. all. There's just, no point. There's no point. I mean, I do feel like they're just going to sprout back up. Yep. And it's like no one's buying those fucking shirts, but those who are listening to us right now. Yeah. So, I mean, as long as we tell them that the only official shirt is on Amazon. Yep. Shirts.tadpog.com. Shirts, 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 shirts. Shirt, 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 yes. shirt, shirt. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, when we look at the shirts numbers after this episode, and they blew the fuck up, we got to do shirt, well, shirt, shirt, shirt. that Judge David shirt. <laughs> I know. The Honorable Judge David presiding. Get Kate, Kate Maddie, and Judge David. So we'll do. Oh, God. Oh, man. You know, we haven't really talked about Night Court a whole lot on this show, and I feel like we fucking better start soon. Yeah, yep. How did Night Court not Night Court? <laughs> That's the, the 1500s version, <laughs> Night Cart. Night Cart. A medieval peasant story who's the dream to be a judge, but he can't because he is not a human, because he does not fit into their hierarchy. Uh. Wake up, sheeple. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, sheeple. You're all, we're all peasants. And when you go to climb Mount Everest, they, the government gives you an aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> judge David has ruled. Slam, slam. <laughs> uh, <laughs> April first, Twitch. Watch for it. MK Ultra. Yeah. <laughs> have no, we done? Have we, we closed this? Else? Have we closed this Our out? theme song is "Moves" by Sycamore Drive. Link to that track from the at Typepog.com. How you even close this out? Um, like we are a lawyer presenting our case to Judge David. Okay. So until next time. Tropical Capricorn. Tropical Capricorn. Objection. (laughs) Take that. Is that a video game reference that I'm not catching? Phoenix Wright. Who? Phoenix Phoenix Wright. Phoenix Wright. The guy from uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3? Yeah, he has, his, he has his own game. Oh, what? Oddly enough, yeah, I know. Is this the one where you, like, count matchsticks and shit? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> have you? Have we talked about the cr- Professor Layton uh, Phoenix Wright crossover? A little bit, thing. I have, beat it. Is that a thing? Okay. Uh-huh. So, I mean, you liked it? No. Oh, it's my least favorite of, oh. of both of those. Oh games. shit! Yeah, I'm surprised not, to hear that. It's not bad, but it's just like it's it's not. It's either no dual one destinies of those or games. yeah, dual destinies is way better. Yeah, all right, but well, that's a bummer. So, what did that come? Did that come out on 3ds? So it was or? the Azran Legacy and stuff like Professor Layton. It's just like it's a mediocre version of both games, as opposed to like a blend of the two that elevates it. Yeah. So except, well, I will say the end. The end was really, really good. Yeah, because it is. The end is the Phoenix Wright style, and instead of the opposition, and that the, op- the opposition is Professor Layton. I've never finished in a uh, Phoenix Wright game, so I'm assuming assuming that the traditional ending to a Phoenix Wright game is a courtroom orgy. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. exactly. Okay, great. That's Which what, is why I was like, I really why Maya's got those big boobs, dude. I mean, I wanted to finish <laughs> Dual Destinies because, like, I was like, I want to see this girl get it. <laughs> so, I just couldn't do it though. I want to see that little smiley face necklace like <laughs> change into horny. What's the color for horny? <laughs> Also, I installed the nude patch on my 3DS. <laughs> Guess who's turning 3D on for this game? Ooga! <laughs> I'm sliding that motherfucker all the way to the top. Oh, boy. Uh, give me a migraine in my head yeah, oh, and gonna, my dick. I'm going to play it at arm's length. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the final court case where your opposition is Professor Layton, that is really good. Oh, that sounds cool. That's mm-hmm. fun. But other than that, I didn't like the game very much. I'm sorry to hear it. Yep. Well, that was a weird stinger. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>